In the age of the internet, hackers often cause a lot of trouble in various areas. Politics, video games, film, and of course, music. There have been many artists who have had their music stolen by hackers and leaked. But sometimes, the hackers want to make some extra money. So they will hold the music for ransom, threatening to leak the music if the ransom isn't paid. So today, we're going to be looking into musicians who were blackmailed by hackers. Real quick, I just want to give a shout out to Get Like Prince since I got this idea from his video called Hackers Who Ruin Rappers' Lives. So make sure to check out his channel he makes great music related content he's super consistent and is very underrated so i will link him in the description below anyways let's continue they have been hacking and leaking like crazy like at the beginning of this year in 2023, Trippy Red was gearing up to release his album Mansion Music. He had been promoting it throughout the month, but then randomly released it on the 20th in a seemingly rushed manner. The album had a lot of mixed reviews, but one thing that everyone noticed was the song Crazy Train with Travis Scott because it had a really weird mix. It was the main thing on this album that stuck out like a sore thumb and had everyone talking about it, especially since they were so excited for the collaboration. So when Trippy appeared in an interview with Zayn Lowe following the album's release, Zayn asked about the mix, wondering if it was some sort of artistic decision or something else. But then Trippy Red revealed something pretty crazy. He said that the mix was the one he received from Travis and his engineer didn't have a chance to mix it because his album was being held for ransom by hackers who were asking for a million dollars or else they would leak it. So instead, Trippy decided to release the album before they could leak it themselves. They wanted me to pay them a million dollars because they had all my records, every single last one, <laughs> all the features. <laughs> Some hackers. Wow. They had all my songs. So I had to rush the project out. And then on top of that, the Travis song, I had it, but I didn't have the, the session. So that's what Travis sent to me. I didn't mix it. My engineer didn't mix it. That's what Travis sent to me. And you just had to run and with it. I had to run with it because if I didn't, the whole project was going to release and it would have been a big thing. And this has been a big thing. Like I kind of was like, if I don't drop it now, then it's going to be out there and they're going to hear it regardless. And they're going to hear the bad mix regardless. So it's like, I'm gonna put it out unmixed and see what they see what they think. Trippy actually continued on saying that this is not the first time that this has happened, and that he was being harassed by hackers for years who have been leaking his albums and holding them for ransom. They have been hacking and leaking like crazy. Like at least my last two, three albums, they I don't know how they do it. Like Pegasus, it probably leaked two months before it dropped, bro. And it still did extremely and well. And, and they want and they want money for it. They're like, you know, we will we'll hold yeah, it. It's they, crazy. Trippy did say that they would work on fixing the mixes after they released the project, and they eventually did update the songs. Some hacker was offering the files for money. So in a very similar situation, Smashing Pumpkins had their album stolen by a hacker who was threatening to release it if he was not paid the ransom. But this time, they actually did pay the ransom. In late 2022 and early to mid 2023, Smashing Pumpkins was releasing their three-part album, Autumn, A Rock Opera, and Three Acts. But while they were releasing the first act, something bad happened. Billy Corgan, the frontman for Smashing Pumpkins, received a message from a fan who told him that nine songs from their upcoming album had leaked online. He revealed this on May 5th this year on the Klein Alley show. Right when the album was being mixed and mastered, you know, which is a very kind of uh, nervous time because the files are finally going out to different people. And as you can imagine, these days, everything's digital. So a fan contacted me and said nine of the songs have leaked. What? This is like six months ago. And they were all the, like, probably the most uh, catchy, singly type song. Right. So it's like, not only is it six months too early, but it like, you're pretty much giving away the album before you even have a chance to even set your feet into the ground. He wasn't sure how the hacker obtained these songs, but the hacker was demanding a ransom for the songs, or he would release them. We don't know exactly how much the ransom was, but Billy said that he paid the ransom out of his pocket to stop the leak from happening. Some hacker was offering the files for money, and we were able to trace it and pay off and Come keep on. it from leaking. Stop and it. The FBI got involved. Did they so. do that thing where like they like a, a person they will send you a toe in the mail to prove they have the person? Did they send you like a like a guitar hook? Like to a be stem. Like, yeah, did they be like we've got this is you. Like <laughs> you Yes, they had they had they had they strangely had stuff that they, there was it wasn't like I don't know. I don't know how they got what they got. So they got it and then ransom was paid? Yes. Um, or did they just want cool my merch? Pocket, unfortunately. You but had to pay. What we were able to do was stop the leak from happening. 
happening. Understandably, he seemed really against allowing the album to leak before it was released, so he paid off the hacker to mitigate the risk. Especially since their rollout seemed very thoughtful and planned out, they couldn't let that happen. And they also couldn't just release the album like Trippy Red did since they were releasing it in three parts. He also didn't want it to leak because the songs that the hacker obtained were songs he figured were the catchiest and most likely to be hit singles, so it could have really hurt the success and profits from the album. Billy also mentioned that the hacker not only had their music, but other unnamed artists as well. So it is possible that other artists may have also had to pay this hacker some hush money. Apparently because of this, the FBI got involved. Billy himself says he isn't sure what happened or how they were able to find the hacker, but apparently the FBI was able to track down the hacker and put a stop to his operation. Maybe he even got his money back, so it seems like this example in particular may have had a happy ending. In this next hack- In this next hack attack the- is this you always being bothered by scam callers? Because I know for a fact it used to be me. But now, thanks to Aura, the sponsor of today's video, I don't have to worry about that. Aura helps identify data brokers that sell your information to spam callers and others who want to learn more about you, including where you live. But after identifying people like this, Aura will actually opt out on your behalf. Aura is super simple to set up and has features like parental controls, antivirus, password management, VPN, identity theft insurance, and more that you can get at one affordable price. My personal favorite feature is the data broker opt-out that I mentioned earlier, because not only does it opt out of spam calls, and I'm not sure if you know this, but there are tons of websites that have all of your information, your name, address, phone number, uh, your relatives, and it's all out there. So what Aura will do is they'll go to these websites and opt out for you on your behalf. It's super awesome, and it makes me feel a lot better knowing that a lot of this information is no longer on the internet for people to see. And I also don't have to deal with those pesky scam callers. So you can either let people continue to exploit you and profit from your information, or you can go to aura.com forward slash Matty Balls and start your two week free trial today. Anyways, back to the video, which is by far the largest ransom on this list. This next hack attack, it wasn't a single artist who had their music held for ransom. And as a matter of fact, it wasn't actually even music. In 2020, an unknown hacker group decided to set their sights on a law firm called Grubman Shire Mycellus and Sachs. Side note, if anyone knows why law firms always have these ridiculously long names, please let me know in the comments below. Anyways, the reason a law firm is in this video is because they have a laundry list of celebrity clientele, such as Madonna, Nicki Minaj, Lady Gaga, Bruce Springsteen, and many more. So the anonymous hacker group used a ransomware called R Evil to gain over 756 gigabytes of stolen data from this firm. Ransomware is, as Google defines it, a type of malicious software designed to block access to a computer system until a sum of money is paid. The hackers didn't actually get any songs, but what they did get was, like I said, 756 gigabytes of legal documents and things of that nature, which if you don't know anything about file sizes, that is a lot of documents. They were holding the documents ransom for $21 million, which is by far the largest ransom on this list. Following that, the Grubman firm hired cyber extortion specialists to combat the ransomware demands, but that clearly didn't work out because in retaliation, the hackers then released released a batch of files that was 2.5 gigabytes large. It included a bunch of documents and legal stuff from Lady Gaga that included promotion agreements, expense sheets, promo photos, and a bunch of other paperwork. There's definitely a lot of information in these documents and other stuff that the hackers obtained that the artists would most likely not want to be leaked, especially depending on their legal situation. After the hackers released that first batch of documents in retaliation to Grumman hiring their cyber extortion specialists, they stated that their new ransom price was doubled to $42 million which is apparently the largest ransomware request in history. They also said online, there's an election race going on and we found a ton of dirty laundry. Mr. Trump, if you want to stay president, poke a sharp stick at the guys, otherwise you may forget this ambition forever. And to you voters, we can let you know that after such a publication, you certainly don't want to see him as president. Well, let's leave out the details. The deadline is one week. But a source that Rolling Stone obtained that was close to the law firm said that the firm had no dealings with Trump, which would make sense because because they mostly worked with musicians. The hackers also released some documents from Christina Aguilera, Madonna, and Lizzo. There hasn't been much reporting on this hack attack since it happened, but we do know that the FBI got involved and recommended that the law firm not pay the ransom, so they didn't. And apparently the firm hired some people who were able to retrieve some of the data, but apparently most of it is still out there and is even available for purchase online. But for some reason, the hackers have not released all of it onto the internet like they were threatening to do. The hackers have also claimed that the firm paid them $365 $5,000, but it is also possible that they lied. Reportedly demanded $150,000 on threat of releasing it.
In mid-2019, the band Radiohead was alerted that hackers had taken 18 hours worth of their unreleased music. They wanted to make some money, so they held it for ransom for $150,000, and if that ransom wasn't paid, they would leak it. I I'd hope you'd understand that by this point in the video. Apparently, the music they had stolen dated all the way back to 1997, and obviously 18 hours worth of music is a lot of music. Most of this music was either demos, live performances, rehearsals, or scrap songs that were never going to be released, so it probably would not have been the end of the world if it was. It was stolen by a user in their Discord named Zimbra, who apparently is very involved in the leaking community. I actually made an entire video on leakers and how much money is being made in this industry, so it's a pretty popular thing if you weren't aware of it. So apparently Zimbra claims to have gotten access to this music by trading his unreleased Beatles music on a leak forum. According to Pitchfork, Zimbra claimed that the ransom thing was just misunderstood and taken out of context. In private Discord messages between the leaker Zimbra and some guy named Rhett, Zimbra was debating whether or not he should leak the album and what the consequences would be. But anyways, let's forget about the random hacker. What happened with the ransom? Well, Radiohead instead used this as an opportunity to raise money to help the environment and combat climate change. Johnny Greenwood, Radiohead's lead guitarist and keyboardist, posted an email that said, We got hacked last week. Someone stole Tom's minidisc archive from around the time of OK Computer and reportedly demanded $150,000 on threat of releasing it. So instead of complaining much or ignoring it, we're releasing all 18 hours on Bandcamp in aid of Extinction Rebellion, just for the next 18 days. So for 18 euros, you can find out if we should have paid that ransom. Never intended for public consumption, though some clips did reach the cassette in the OK Computer reissue, it's only tangentially interesting and very, very long. Extinction Rebellion is an international climate action movement that started in the United Kingdom, so it looks like they were donating to a good cause. The album, appropriately titled Mini Discs Hacked, then released on June 11th. They were able to turn a bad situation into an amazing one, raising 500,000 pounds for Extinction Rebellion. Meanwhile, in the Radiohead subreddit and Discord community, multiple members created a Google document detailing the storyline with Zimbra, the leaks, and the ransom. It also included the track list with a bunch of details about the songs. I won't go into too much detail because it doesn't really matter, but they claimed, stories about the discs being held for ransom are untrue, and it seems that even the band believed them. The band may intentionally be crafting their own story story, or they may be misinformed. It was incredibly frustrating reading the articles that got it all wrong. Now that everything is out of the bag, we believe the world deserves to know the real truth, what actually happened that led to this release. So as you can see, this was a huge deal in their community, especially since all of these random Reddit and Discord users were in one way or another responsible for one, Radiohead releasing a whole album, and two, Radiohead making a ton of money for charity. Apparently, Zimbra decided to leak the album under another innocent Discord user's username two days before Radiohead had released it. However, it was released on the dark web and obviously didn't make much of a difference since Radiohead turned it into a huge promotional thing for a good cause, and clearly it worked out. This video is a bit shorter since thankfully this doesn't happen too often, but make sure to stay tuned for next week's video. I'm super excited about it because it's going to be the third part and the final part to my music conspiracy theories series i guess and those are always super fun to make i'm super excited so stay tuned anyways thank you guys for watching i really appreciate it if you liked please make sure to leave a like and even consider subscribing uh but other than that this has been maddie balls and i'll see you guys next time